Excellent! How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Probing Paul, my monthly Q&A video that I do. This is episode number 15 and I'm going to be answering your questions that were primarily asked in last month's video, uh, Probing Paul number 14 as you can see right here. I'll link that down in the video's description if you want to uh, go back into the history of questions that have been asked of me and, you know, f figure out what my answers to them were. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump right into it for today. Uh, again, most of these were taken from last month's video, although I have, well, I have at least one other besides that. First question is from Nicholas Reef, who asked, uh, this wasn't a question, this was a follow-up to last month, which uh, the title was how to get rid of or sell old PC parts, and I neglected to mention the subreddit, uh, Hardware Swap, and Nicholas pointed this out, and quite a few people actually upvoted his comments, so thanks to all you guys who did that. Uh, basically, on the Reddit Hardware, so hardware Swap subreddit, you can go on, people post stuff that they're selling, uh, depending on the location you're at and that kind of thing. Uh, I actually haven't bought anything directly off of here, although I have browsed it before, um, but it's a great way to find some good deals. Bear in mind that uh, apparently, according to some of the other commenters, if you're selling stuff there, there's a tendency for people to try to lowball you with the prices that they're offering and everything. But maybe a little bit more direct method of finding some hardware that's available in your area without having to go through something like eBay, where you might have to pay extra fees uh, or deal with uh, shady return policies or that kind of thing. The next question was actually asked in last night's Awesome Hardware. And I saw this in chat, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to screen cap it or see who actually asked it. But I've been asked this before as well, but it's where do you get your Lord of the Rings t-shirts? Uh, I'm wearing I'm wearing one of these right now. This is my Entmoot Maple Mead shirt. Basically, I have like three of these shirts. My wife got them for me. Basically, uh, they're they're all like Lord of the Rings themed beers and kind of shirts with that, which which um, thought felt pretty appropriate for me. Um, but they all come from T Fury. So if you go to T Fury and search for Lord of the Rings, uh, you can find this page where they have lots of Lord of the Rings themed T-shirts. Two of the three that I have aren't available anymore. I have this Green Dragon Lager one. Uh, right here. And then I also have the, the Minas Tirith White Ale, I believe, and then of course my Maple Mead. There's also a Mirkwood Merlot, apparently, but that's not beer. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with wine, but just not beer. Uh, but that's where I got them. Again, they might not all still be available for, uh, for sale, but uh, if you guys want to check it out, maybe they'll bring them back at some point. Next question is from Ellis Frost. What are the best ways to get into working with PCs? I've applied to a few stores, but haven't been accepted. I'd love to be a system builder or somehow get a job doing benchmarks rather than as a sales advisor. Any suggestions? This is a very good question, and I get asked quite a bit because lots of people kind of want to do the type of thing that I do uh, because it's, it's, it's a really cool job to have. I'm not going to deny, deny that. I really like making YouTube videos about technology. It's a difficult uh, market to break into. My recommendations for you would be, first off, make sure you have a solid foundation of knowledge of what you're talking about when it comes to the PC hardware, if that's what you're focused on. Several responses to this question last month also pointed out that getting some certifications could be a way to get uh, yourself helped out getting A-plus certified or getting network or security certification. I like the real world experience though, the hands-on stuff, so definitely spend as much time as you can just doing what you do as a hobby. Try to get your hands on as much computer parts as possible, help out people building systems, because the more you work with it, the more familiar you will be with it. But more realistically, if you're looking in, at something entry level, I would look at at companies that are already established that work in this market. I started at Newegg doing something completely unrelated to what I eventually did there doing the YouTube channel, but because I was interested in computers, I was able to kind of work my way through up to a couple different positions to end up doing what I what I ended up doing. I definitely say check out the review sites that are out there because there's lots of review sites of varying sizes that will often hire out third parties as independent contractors to write stories for them and they'll often be able to send you a part or something to take and do a review on or something like that. That could be a good way to kind of get your foot in the door, start to get yourself noticed, uh, and then of course start to learn the industry a little bit more because it's really not that huge of an industry when it comes to technology and computers in general. Um, but hopefully those are a few sort of starting out tips that could help you all along on your way. Uh, and overall, I would say definitely make sure you have a, a good grasp of communication skills because that's very important. Whether you're talking or whether you're writing, you need to be able to use the proper words to uh, get, get your point across as far as what you're saying. And um, there's really no solution for that. And I feel like as I talk about being able to speak well, I should use better words to describe that, but uh, that's that's okay. Let's move on. Uh, your, our proxy, your proxy says, I have a Ryzen 7 1700. Is it a bad idea to buy a GTX 1070 for 1440p 75 hertz 
gaming, I'm assuming, uh, I would say no, it's not at all a bad decision. In fact, the GTX 1070 is considered by many to be the absolute ideal sweet spot GPU for 1440. You're also at 75 hertz, so you're not gonna have to worry about hitting really high frame rates, but um, a 1070 should easily get you by, and I would even say like, I mean, obviously you could go for a 1080, but I wouldn't even bother. 1070 is perfect, and I've recommended it many, many times for 1440 gaming. Uh, again, especially at the refresh rate that you're looking at. Next up is Radioactive Phoenix. With Acer and Asus having upcoming monitors that are 4K HDR and 144Hz, what GPU do you think would be required to achieve those specs? Or I imagine to push a game at 4K resolution, 144 frames per second average or minimum, ideally. Would a GTX 1080 Ti be enough? So just to show you guys what Radioactive Phoenix is talking about here, uh, Acer just recently announced the Predator X27, a 4K HDR, 144Hz G-Sync monitor, the ultimate gaming monitor. Uh, Asus has a monitor in the works as well with these very similar specs we're anticipating. It's probably based on the same panel. Uh, now, I'm, I'm sort of giving a broad answer here because I'm not saying here are the benchmarks that show this or that. A 1080 Ti will be adequate, is what I would say. Obviously, it's going to greatly depend on what game you're playing. If all you want to do is play CSGO at 4K 144Hz, you're probably going to be just fine, even with less than a 1080 Ti. But if you want to play the newest AAA titles with max uh, you know, eye candy and all the special effects turned on at full resolution uh, with 144 frames per second. 1080 Ti even is probably not going to cut it, depending again on the situation and the game that's being played. You would probably be looking at a two-way 1080 Ti solution for something like this if you really wanted to maximize the game performance. But realistically, it's probably going to be the type of thing that you just don't use to its full potential until another generation of GPUs come out that can handle that high resolution a little bit more easily. Because 4K, even though it's been around for a few years now, uh, it's still very difficult to push a game uh, at 4K, especially if it is a high-end game. But thank you so much for that question, Radioactive Phoenix. Simple question here from Max Fox. Ultra-wide or 4K for gaming? Uh, simple answer? Ultra wide is what I would say right now. Reasons being, 4K I think is a little bit better for productivity. 4K is harder to push as we've already discussed. There's more pixels in 4K even than in an ultra wide uh, like the Acer Predator X34 I have back here, 3440 by 1440. You get more more pixels than you would with 1080 uh, or even 1440. You get a wide screen uh, which is I think a bit more immersive and fantastic for gaming. And again, you don't need quite as much GPU horsepower to push it. So that's what I would go for. Even the 2560 by 1080 ultra wides, I think are a great solution for getting into that uh, market and that, that way of gaming without having to spend a ton of money. OMF Gory asks, hey Paul, I have a pretty old motherboard and an 8300, an FX 8300. Should I upgrade to the Ryzen 5 for 1080p gaming only? OMF, Glo OMF Gory, I say yes. Right now is the time to upgrade your FX-based uh, system. The FX series launched in like 2011, so they're like six. The, the architecture used in them is even older than that, six or seven years old. So uh, yeah, I demonstrated in my Ryzen 7 launch video that when you're playing on a, even an overclocked 8350, it really hurts performance, even at 1080. Uh, so you're going to get a nice boost, especially if you're pairing it with a decent graphics card. And the Ryzen 5 lineup is, is really nice right now. And you get a lot of bang for your buck. I'd say go for the Ryzen 5 1600 and overclock it. That's that's my suggestion. Swap Swapnil Chapad uh, asks, what happened to your giveaway? I'm not going to win, but still. Uh, I've gotten this question quite a bit over the last month, so I wanted to address it here very briefly. Uh, my giveaway ended... Here's my tweets back at the beginning of April. Uh, I, I first picked the US uh, $1,000 USD cash winner. I uh, went to Peter from Vienna, Austria. He claimed that really quickly, sent that over to him. I picked the uh, domestic winner. Uh, it, his name was Logan, and he didn't follow up. He didn't respond to me in time. So I ended up picking a new winner uh, who, wait, where, where did it go? New winner is Matt. He's from Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, he claimed it right quick, and actually, if you guys are curious, Logan did get back to me eventually, and I'm going to be sending him uh, a sweatshirt from my store, or one of my hoodies, just as a consolation prize, because he was disappointed, obviously, but he was also very reasonable about it. Matt, who did win, actually sent, uh, or donated on Awesome Hardware last night, and gave us an Im imager link, uh, which I neglected to show on the show, but I wanted to show here. Here is the RGB build in its new home. He's actually done some building and reconfiguration. He's upgraded. It's got like seven terabytes of storage in it now. He moved the uh, liquid cooler from the front to the top, um, but as you can see, he's got a really cool looking kind of flame 
looks like fiery color scheme going on right now. And there's his full setup that he sent a picture of too. So very glad that it went to Matt because he was super cool. Uh, actually, I didn't even send him all the pieces that for the case. I missed out on some of the accessories. He got in touch with Fantex and they replaced those for him. So that was very cool of Fantex as well. So that was a really uh, cool giveaway and I'm glad that Matt won it. And of course, apologies to any of you guys who didn't win, but I did my best. Uh, final question from Jordan S. He says, I love you, Paul. Would you like to spoon with a 35-year-old, 6'5", 270 pound Italian-American man? I know I'm a big guy, but I would be gentle. Jordan, I'm intrigued. Obviously, I'm married, so i got to take that into account. But you know what? There's, there's nothing mentioned here besides spooning. That could be purely platonic. And, you know, it just it feels like it would be warm and, and it would like it would feel safe. So um, I'm not going to say no. I'll leave it at that. But guys, that's all for this uh, video, this episode of Probing Paul. Thanks so much for all the questions that have been submitted. I'll be doing this again next month, so if you have any more questions to ask, leave them in the comment section down below. Of course, if you're down there and you uh, want to take a gander at the description, I've got some links to some of the stuff I talked about today, uh, as well as the thumbs up button. If you want to like the video, that's always appreciated. Helps me out a lot. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.